Hi, so I'm back with some more um, tips and tricks. And um, I've had a few people asking me for a tour of my studio and I thought now would be quite a good time to show you around because I've just recently got some new equipment. Um, it's actually a whole bunch of analog gear. You can see I now have mm. an analog rack wow. of beauties and a patch bay which used to belong to Arthur Baker. If you're young you probably won't know who he is but um, if you're over 30 you may well um, do. So um, I'm able to kind of connect things much more easily than having to do what we call rack yoga and kind of go around the back of all the equipment. So that's been quite handy. But anyway, um, I've got a new song called Testament, a bit of a Sade kind of vibe. So I'm going to play you a little bit of that and then I wanted to show you some quick and easy automation effects. For example, if you wanted to have a bit of vocal and you wanted to have, for example, you know those little delays, repeating delays coming after a word. So I use this technique in this song. So I'll play you a section. Hope you like it. snippet there of the main hook. What I want to go into now is just a little bit of the backing vocal where I repeat this section, um, this word still, which happens in the verse. So I'm just going to go to that track and solo it and you'll hear that repeating. But I don't want it repeating on the whole of the track and I'm going to show you how you can just isolate one section. So it's soloing. Still, 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 still. So you can hear there I've got a nice little repeating section. And in order to do automation, which is essentially, I'm um, coming from the word kind of automatic to automate, um, we can basically use any of the effects we're using on a channel strip. So at the moment I've got a nice tape delay inserted on my channel strip here. And what I can do is just control the amount um, of tape delay I'm hearing in a particular section and also for how long. And the quickest and easiest way to do this is to just hit A for automation on the keyboard. So can you see when I hit automation, we can kind of see these lines appearing um, on the screen. This is previous automation that I've done. If we go to the effect, the still effects vocal, which I'm working on, I'm just going to go to the tape delay. So any of the effects I've got here, you can see they're all listed. And I'm going to go to the mix. And I, I just have a kind of blank line. This is the line I'm going to be working on at the moment. It's as yet uncolored. What I can do is just create what's called a node here at just 30%, which is where it is anyway. And then for this end bit where I want to have a little bit of delay, I'm just going to push the mix up to about 58. And then I want it to kind of stop repeating quite quickly. So then I'm just going to drag it all the way down. So let's just have a listen. And you can hear it kind of peaked with the vocal and then it kind of gradually tapered down. There's other things that you can automate as well. For example, I'm using something called a de -esser quite a lot, which um, gets rid of any sibilance when you say um, a lot of S's. And in this word testament, when I'm singing it's a testament, there's so many S's and this was really, really hard for me to DS. So for example, I'm just going to show you a section where I wanted the DS in, and I didn't want to have to create another whole track and use loads of processing to have a duplicate track. I just wanted to be able to turn the de on and off. Um, and it's quite funny because in the old days people would actually have to ride a real mixing desk in order to kind of add this kind of automation and you'd have about five people and fingers and toes kind of working all over the desk to try and set this up. Now I'm going to set the channel strip to a setting called touch down here in the automation control. So that means anything I touch during this next section that I play, and I'm only playing, I'm not even in record mode, I'm just in play mode. Anything I touch whilst the touch button is activated will then be kind of recorded into the automation. But if you watch, I'll just open the effect and I'm going to bypass it when it gets to the section where I want it to stop de -essing. back to read mode which enables me to now read the information that I had. 
hit A again to go to automation. And if we go in close here, can you see where I kind of bypassed and turned it on and off? And again, you can do that manually if you wanted to as well, insert a bypass, and it'll just turn that effect on and off. So now let's just watch that effect being turned on and off by the computer in read mode. So here's the effect. That is turning on and off with no hands. Anyway, I hope this really kind of helps you to use some of the simple functionality of automation. Obviously, there's a lot more that you can do and any effect um, in, in logic that you have installed, you can basically automate most of the parameters. So I hope you can have some fun doing that. And um, next time I'll be back for a tour of some of my new equipment as I'm now running through um, some analog gear. I've got some nice compression and I've also got a new patch base. So um, I'll be back to kind of give you a tour of how I'm using that and also how I'm kind of setting up auxiliary channels and bussing things around so that um, the digital inner world of my computer can kind of communicate with the outer world of analog equipment. Um, nice talking to you. See you soon. Bye.